Transfer ist personengetrieben und insofern sind die jetzt schon entstandenen Kontakte und die, die sich weiterentwickeln für die Zukunft, sicherlich sehr, sehr hilfreich. Um, it's, it's as simple as that. Together, we're successful. Knowledge transfer up and right. Be part of it. With this project, Kartur, we will contribute to strengthen the Upper Rhine metropolitan region. I see this as a fantastic growth opportunity for all of us and a vital step towards our shared aspiration of becoming the pioneering region in Europe. And, yeah. On est aussi en capacité de faire une offre globale vers les entreprises, et ce qui est beaucoup plus intéressant que si on essaye de faire chacun des projets de son côté. with the topic of entrepreneurship and um, also to get in touch with people from different um, cultures. Transfer ist personengetrieben und insofern sind die jetzt schon entstandenen Kontakte und die, die sich weiterentwickeln für die Zukunft, sicherlich sehr, sehr hilfreich. Um, it's, it's as simple as that. Together, we're successful. Knowledge transfer, up and right. Be part of it.
project CARTOUR, we will contribute to strengthen the Upper Rhine metropolitan region. I see this as a fantastic growth opportunity for all of us and a vital step towards our shared aspiration of becoming the pioneering region in Europe. And yeah. On, on est aussi en capacité de faire une offre globale vers les entreprises et ce qui est beaucoup plus intéressant que si on, on essaye de faire chacun des projets de son côté. with the topic of entrepreneurship and um, also to get in touch with people from different um, cultures. Knowledge transfer up the right. Be part of it. CARTOUR, we will contribute to strengthen the Upper Rhine metropolitan region. I see this as a fantastic growth opportunity for all of us and a vital step towards our shared aspiration of becoming the pioneering region in Europe. And yeah. On, on est aussi en capacité de faire une offre global vers les entreprises et ce qui est beaucoup plus intéressant que si on, on essaye de faire chacun des projets de son côté. with the topic of entrepreneurship 
and um, also to get in touch with people from different um, cultures. Transfer ist personengetrieben und insofern sind die jetzt schon entstandenen Kontakte und die, die sich weiterentwickeln für die Zukunft, sicherlich sehr, sehr hilfreich. Knowledge Transfer up the right. Be part of it. With this project, CARTOUR, we will contribute to strengthen the Upper Rhine metropolitan region. I see this as a fantastic growth opportunity for all of us and a vital step towards our shared aspiration of becoming the pioneering region in Europe and beyond. On est aussi en capacité de faire une offre globale vers les entreprises et ce qui est beaucoup plus intéressant que si on essaye de faire chacun des projets de son côté. definitely recommend everybody to participate in this um, summer school because I've learned so much and I believe it's of great value actually and um, to get in touch with the topic of entrepreneurship and um, also to get in touch with people from different um, cultures. Transfer ist personengetrieben und insofern sind die jetzt schon entstandenen Kontakte und die, die sich weiterentwickeln für die Zukunft, sicherlich sehr, sehr hilfreich. Knowledge Transfer, up the right. Be part of it.
project car tour we will contribute to strengthen the upper rhine metropolitan region I see this as a fantastic growth opportunity for all of us and a vital step towards our shared aspiration of becoming the pioneering region in europe and yeah. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. I moved to Karlsruhe about three years ago with my family from Leipzig. I was on the street last summer talking to my children. And a friend of mine came up with his road bike, and he was talking about his road bike trip that he had just taken to Strasbourg. And I explained to my daughters that this is a city in France, and their jaws dropped, and their eyes went wide, and they looked at me, and they said, this friend, he took his bike all the way to France? And I laughed, and I explained to them that France is just around the corner. That was a mistake. I had to promise my children that we would also take a bike ride all the way to France. And we did that this summer. So we took our bikes to Neuburg Weiher. We got on a small ferry. We crossed the Rhine. And then we were on the other side. And they looked at me, are we in France now? No, no, we're not there yet. So we have to take a few more minutes, about 10, 15 minutes. And then I asked them to stop. And I looked at them and I said, OK, so if you take two steps, you'll be in France. And they looked at me, so what? So now we're in France? And they looked back, and they jumped back and forth. So we're in Germany, and we're in France. The thing is, for them, this was not surprising. For them, they are European by birth. They're used to traveling through Europe without borders, without patrols. They don't know the Deutsche Mark. They don't know the Franck. For them, knowledge transfer is completely natural. For me, it was quite surprising that the baker in Lauterburg, where we ordered our Tarte au Citron, spoke fluent German. To them, it was not. It was more, Mom, why do you not speak French? They are our neighbors. You cannot speak with our neighbors. My older daughter, she learns French as her first foreign language here in school. My younger daughter, she's at a bilingual kindergarten here in Karlsruhe. For them, knowledge transfer is natural. My name is Olivia Wolfhardt. I will be leading you through the next two hours. I welcome you to the closing event. I welcome our digital audience at home to the closing event of three years of KTOUR, a tri-national project with knowledge and technology transformation at its core. I look forward to hearing from our panelists about project results, project successes. But first, I'd like to welcome Professor Dr. Thomas um, Hirt, sorry, <laughs> Professor Dr. Thomas Hirt, to formally open this closing event. Professor Hirt is the Vice President for Transfer and International Affairs at my home and the hosting university, KIT, and I look forward to hearing from you about KTOUR. Welcome, Professor Hirt. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear Mr. Dr. Bürgen, dear Mr. Bernardini, dear Dr. Reiter, dear guests, dear colleagues, it's a great honor and pleasure for me to welcome you all to the CATUR project closing event at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Karlsruhe in the Upper Rhine metropolitan region. 2010, with the Offenburg Declaration, the three national Upper Rhine metropolitan region has formed and set itself the goal to make the Upper Rhine one of the most competitive regions in Europe and to improve the cooperation between the actors in the fields of politics and administration, economy, science, and civil society. And with its, its initial strategy 2020 and the current strategy on from 2030, the TMO has aligned itself with Europe's challenges and priorities. With the foundation of OICO, the European Confederation of Upper Rhine Universities in 1989, and as well as the further development to the European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation 
Oikar the European Campus in 2015, and the foundation of the Tree Renatech Alliance of Universities of Applied Sciences in 2014, the scientific community has set an accent for cross-border cooperation in research and innovation at a very early stage in order to make a substantial contribution to the competitiveness of the region. Europe and the world are currently facing major challenges such as climate change, energy transformation, digitalization, combating disease, and quite unexpectedly this year, supporting Ukraine in defense against Russia. By the year 2030, for example, the world population will increase to more than 8 billion people, the global energy demand will increase by more than 50%, and the demand for raw materials by, by more than 100%, and the demand for food and water by more than 40% compared to 2010. And in this context, the question arises how we can manage this. Europe wants to give answers to this question, and therefore, Europe's strategy for the 21st century includes the following priorities. Europe aims to be the first climate neutral continent by becoming a modern, resource efficient economy, the European Great Deal. To empower people with a new generation of technologies, a Europe fit for the digital age. To create a more attractive investment environment and growth that creates quality jobs, especially for young people and small business. An economy that works for people. And in connection with the war in the Ukraine, to give a new push for European democracy, to protect our democracy from external influence, and to strengthen European values. This gains even greater importance. Megatrends have also a strong impact on innovation systems and the challenges of the 21st century can be faced with innovations. Over the next decades, disruptive as well as sustaining innovations will change our lives. Universities are of particular importance in the context of transformation processes in Europe since they play a key and leading role with their task, research, teaching and innovation and service for society, the European knowledge quadrangle in this transformation process. Therefore, the cooperation between academia and industry in various formats is a decisive element of an innovation strategy. And at this point, I would also like to quote Winfried Kretschmann, the Minister President of Baden-Württemberg, who said on the occasion of a delegation visit to Strasbourg in April this year, that if especially the border regions that are most predestinated to realize the European idea. To become more stronger and more competitive cooperation and transfer, that means knowledge and technology transfer are becoming increasingly important for the three national Upper Rhine metropolitan region. And for this reason, the, uni the universities, the five univers OICO universities and the University Koblenz Landau and six three Arena Tech universities of applied sciences together with many associated partners have come together in 2019 and started the CARTUR project, Knowledge and Technology Transfer Upper Rhine. The overall objective was to facilitate and networking project innovation between science and industry in the Upper Rhine region by systemization and professionalization of the cross-border cooperation in knowledge and technology transfer. In detail, this aims to establish a long-term cross-border network of technology transfer offices, to establish a digital information and communication platform as a first contact point, and to establish joint offerings in the knowledge and technology transfer sector. And we, how we have achieved that? By working on the following tasks. The analysis 
of the KTT at universities and universities of applied sciences, the benchmark analysis of regional and supra-regional knowledge and technology transfer networks and platforms, the identification and the analysis of existing corporations in the Upper Rhine region, the identification and definition of pilot measures and which gives the project its special value, the implementation and the testing of selected pilot measures, for example, a cooperation of the TTO offices, the exchange platform, education, startups, and innovation events. So what are the specific results that the team has achieved during the three-year project period? An active cross-border network of knowledge and technology transfer offices the Kartour Innovation X platform, continuing education formats for industry, services for entrepreneurship and startups, and the Three National Innovation Day in the Upper Rhine region um, in April this year. So many thanks to the Kartour team for this valuable work performed in the past three years and the contribution to the future viability of the three national Upper Rhine metropolitan region. Therefore, the CARTOUR projects and all partners combine cooperation and transfer and thus contribute directly to making the TMO region stronger and more competitive. A major challenge in innovation-oriented research and technology transfer is communication between science industry and society. And with today's event, and many thanks to the Karlsruhe Kartour team for organizing this event, we strengthen this dialogue between science and industry and bring together the right partners of the Upper Rhine Valley. And with today's presentations and discussions, we would like to make a substantial contribution to innovation and sustainable development in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, what is now the added value for the region, our partners, our supporters, members of our network, as well as stakeholders from other universities and the private sectors. We have raised awareness of the region's innovation potential. We brought together the relevant stakeholders from all the three countries involved. We have raised awareness of the competences and activities in technology transfer in the region. We have created a first point of contact for the industry, and we have created the basis for future cooperation projects. To the end, I would like to thank all the members of the project team, especially the project manager, Dagmar Füssing, and all partners for their excellent work and engagement. And I would like to end with a motto, which I think fits very well to the project, and that's what we have been performed so far. The best way to cope with the challenges of the future is to shape it actively and jointly. I wish you now all an informative Kartour project closing event with interesting talks and discussions, and I would like to thank you all for coming and for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Hurd, for formally opening this event. It's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who is a prime example of crossing borders and knowledge transfer. Dr. Hans Reiter, born in Switzerland, in Bern, with a doctorate in law from the University of Mannheim in Baden-Württemberg, will speak to us now about the um, Baden-Württemberg perspective on knowledge and technology transfer and cross-border industry science cooperation. Dr. Reiter is Ministerial Director in the Ministry of Science, Research and Arts of the Federal State of Baden-Württemberg. Welcome, Dr. Reiter. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the kind introduction, Dr. Wolfhardt. Dear Vice President Hirt, dear Dr. Bürgin, dear partners, supporters and friends of the Knowledge Transfer Upper Rhine project, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad to join you here today and 
for all of us to be reminded of the great potential for cooperation in this region. This is an area with a bright future that we in Baden-Württemberg want to continue to push forward, especially when it comes to science and research, where several initiatives and networks show just how close our nations in the Upper Rhine region can work together. From our cooperation in the science offensive to support innovation in the area, along with cross-border networks such as OICOR, Trirena Tech, and the European University Alliance Initiative, EPICURE. Yet, what is it that makes this region so valuable and strong in innovation? The first, obviously, has to do with the surrounding regions and states between Baden-Württemberg, Eastern France, and Northwest Switzerland. This is the innovative heart of Europe. We profit here from a rich and diverse landscape of universities and scientific institutions, all of with a constantly providing talent and new ideas for the region. And with the KTUR project, our universities are showing their ability to bridge the gap from science to business. Our universities of applied science, with their stronger focus on user-driven research, are natural partners for the economy. Specialized institutes, like Fraunhofer, offer in-depth and cutting-edge scientific expertise needed to tackle the challenges of the future. And places like the Cooperative State University of Baden-Württemberg, or DHBW, as we call it in German, help integrate academic studies with workplace training, thus providing high-skilled talents for modern workplaces. In addition to this diverse scientific landscape and our strong economy, we here have good cooperation with the public sector, especially cities, which help push sustainable development. But potentially, the biggest strength of the Upper Rhine cross-border cooperation. Now it's true that cross-border projects often suffer due bureaucratic issues. Let me be clear, I'm not ignoring these problems. We need to reduce red tape, overcome closed nationalistic ideas, and make more efforts to simplify cooperation. Yet we also need to take advantage of the tools and freedoms that we have, like the Aachen Treaty and Experiment Clause in Article 13. By using our strength and freedoms, we may be able to improve on the potential already here. Let's not be overly cautious. Rather, let us be creative and truly innovative. Now you may say, those all sound like great ideas, but how do we actually put them into action? For this, I believe, we have several tools and platforms ready to go. Speaking here, the final ceremony of the KTUR project, one must name Interreg as a program for EU regional policy and partial founder of KTUR. Another potential network would be the TMO or RMT in, uh, in French, that is the Tri-National Metropolitan Region of the Upper Rhine. This is a bottom-up network and it has proven to work especially in the R&D sector. In my opinion, the TMO strategy 2030 laid out the central challenges that the region faces and provides guidelines to support projects. Baden-Württemberg would certainly support the further development of the Upper Rhine region guided by the TMO strategy. Part of this strategy is the science offensive which over the past decade has launched three successful founding lines. And it's preparing for a fourth, this time with a strong focus on technology and knowledge transfer, especially fitting for our audience and event today. Dear ladies and gentlemen, the k Tour project may be ending, but I believe its works and benefits will go on in the region. So thank you to entire project team for your great efforts and networking. Like many of us over the past few years, 
You dealt with unique and challenging circumstances, but you made the best of your situation. You learned and benefited from these challenges, helping to provide both new digital and face-to-face -face formats for future events and networking. Even ranging from the Innovation Day Upper Rhine to start-up talks and workshops. With this project, we all hope that you have paved the way for more cross-border technology and knowledge transfer. However, we all know that the work does not simply end when a project is over. A good project like KTUR shows where we can be better. I mainly see two findings from this project. First, the process was mainly driven by the scientific side with the business partners only as associates. I would wish that the business side would come in as an equal partner on a level playing field, encouraging more exchange between the two worlds of academia and economics. Second, I was happy to see that an intensive German-French exchange took place during the project. If we could achieve the same level of participation with our Swiss partners, it would be truly push this initiative. I'm aware that the relations between Switzerland and the EU are currently not at their best. Yet the delegation trip by Minister President Gretschmann to Zurich and Basel in April this year and the letter of intent with the Canton of Basel from this trip show that there is further potential in this area. With the help of projects like KTUR, let's continue to use cross-border networks to strengthen our cooperation in the future. Let us realize the full potential of the Upper Rhine region with German, French and Swiss partners, academia, business and the public working together for a successful and sustainable future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Reiter. We had a last minute cancellation from our French partners from Irene Weiss, but we were very lucky to have found an adequate substitute with Dr. Jean-Jacques Bernardini. Dr. Bernardini is the head of European is head of the European Affairs Department um, of the Grande Innove, which is the regional innovation agency in Grand Est. He will speak about the French perspective on knowledge and technology transfer, as well as the cooperation between industry and science. Dr. Bernardini, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, it's, uh, first, it's a real pleasure to be, uh, to be uh, with you. It's a little bit hard to speak uh, after Professor Reert, uh, Dr. Reiter, after all they said about uh, the importance of the cooperation in the Upper Rhine Valley, and especially for the crucial question of the transfer of technology and competences. I will try in some few words to give you an overview of the situation in Région Grand Est. You know that Région Grand Est is a very large region. We start uh, near Paris and the end of the regions is the German and, and the Swiss uh, border, but also the border with Luxembourg and, uh, and, and Belgium. And in Région Grand Est, we are a crucial point. If we consider the uh, European funds, we are a moment with, uh, we finalized the discussion with the European Commission for the setting up of the smart specialization strategy for the next, uh, the next six years. And we are working uh, very uh, hardly with the region on the setting up of another very important program, which is the national program to define the regional strategy for economical development, uh, European affairs and internationalizations. So that's basically uh, in Region Grand Est, and I think that is the same situation in Baden-Württemberg and the north of Switzerland, we are all facing deep transformations of our economy. Of course, we have the crucial importance of the digital in the economy. Uh, not only uh, integrations of uh, technologies like inter artificial intelligence or cybersecurity, but also to work to the integrations of basic BRICS, technological uh, BRICS in the, in, in, in the companies. Uh, we are surprised, it's surprising, but many small companies, they need to integrate ERP systems before to integrate artificial technologies and, and cyber or, or other key technologies. And on the other side, we have also 
to think to the next generations of uh, technologies, for example, the metaverse. So digitalization is a key topic. Second key topic is the green transformations. We are all facing an energy crisis, and for us, it's a source of opportunities in terms of development of uh, new technologies and services in order to allow to that our industry would be more green and more independent in terms of energy consumption. So we speak about many uh, topics, very important topics, like for example, circular economy, uh, which is also a key, uh, a key topic. Topic number three is the deep transformations of the health systems. And the COVID show us that in fact, that we should not only adapt, we, but we have to invent new ways to uh, develop technologies for, for health. And, and the COVID was a perfect case. We were able to do it in a few, in a few months. And last but not least, we have also the problematic of the industry. Because in Baden-Württemberg, in Grand Est, and Switzerland, we are very traditional industrial regions. Industry is our DNA. We have so many companies, large companies, family-owned business, many, uh, small companies, large companies, in fact, that's and the transformations of the industry. Integrating bricks coming from the green revolutions, coming in bricks, integrating bricks uh, from the digital and so on, that's it's also important. And we have to do it very quickly. Because in fact, in terms of competitiveness, we cannot wait for so many years. And we have to do it, but not alone. And the idea is, is to plug the different stakeholders, the universities, the engineering schools, the TTOs, the companies, in order to do it from a very effective way in the next, uh, in the next, uh, in the next years. So the new regional uh, uh, innovation strategy is based on these main uh, topics. And the idea is to accelerate in, in, and create the conditions. Uh, conditions could be create networks of competences. This is the idea with the JET in the region Grand Est. Grid is transformation, one for digital, one for the industry, one for F, one for the green transitions, in which you have in the same network, the universities, the TTOs, and the companies, in order to have discussions between all the stakeholders to have some ideas to transform ideas into products, technologies, or, or, or services. And we cannot do it only in Grand Est. We have to open the chakra to what happened in Baden-Württemberg and the north of Switzerland. And that's why CATUR is a very interesting uh, project, because we are thinking in a different space, which is the upper end space, in which we have so many competences in so many different technologies for so many different markets. So clearly, the scale is not only the region, but it's clearly the, the upper right. And I will conclude by more personal uh, words. Um, I came in Région Grand Est in Alsace 32 years ago. I came from the south of uh, France, and I discovered Strasbourg. I did not only discover Strasbourg. I discovered the upper right. And I discovered that this region is very close from Baden-Württemberg and the north of Switzerland. Not only for traveling, shopping, and so on, but this is a community in terms, not only from a historical perspective, but also for an economical perspective. And clearly for someone like me that we are working in European affairs for 25 years, it's clear that the Upper Rhine is a place to be. And I will conclude, uh, I hope that the catch your project, it's not the end or something, but only the beginning of another thing. And I hope that catch your two will uh, allow us to go a step beyond in terms of cooperations between our different uh, regions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bernardini. You heard it, the Upper Rhine region is the place to be. So we crossed the border, we crossed the Rhine to France, and now we will head down south. And it is my pleasure to introduce our final speaker um, for the opening words, Dr. Ariane Bürgen from the Caton Basel. Um, she is the head of the higher education division in the Department of Education of Basel City. And she will speak to us about the Swiss perspective, the Swiss perspective on the necessity and the um, relevance of knowledge transformation and technology transformation, as well as cross-border industry and science cooperation. Welcome, Dr. Bürgen.
Thank you very much. Sehr geehrter Herr Professor Dr. Thomas Hirt, ähm, Monsieur Bernardini, sehr geehrter Herr Dr. Hans Reiter, dear stakeholders in our cross-border cooperation. It is a great honor for me as representative of the canton of Basel, Basel-Stadt, to have the opportunity to talk to you here today. We have come together to celebrate the successful completion of the knowledge transfer operine interreg project. Allow me first to expand on the European Union funding instrument interreg, which is also available to Switzerland, although it is not a member of the European Union. The Canton of Basel-Stadt quickly recognized the, the advantages of participation and has been involved since the start of the funding instrument in 1990. As a result, it has been possible to support over 140 projects from Basel-Stadt with a total funding volume of over 15 million francs. And thanks to the Operine Interreg with its, its wide-reaching funding approach, we have been able both to further deepen the good relationship we enjoy with our neighbors and also to strengthen our shared economic knowledge and living space. Interreg as such is the driving force and facilitator of a sustainable economic knowledge-based and social development on the Upper Rhine. The Parliament of the Canton of Basel-Stadt actually raised cantonal funding to some extent for the newly started funding um, period of Interreg 6, thus sending a clear signal for project-based European cooperation on the trinational operine. I would now like to turn to the significance of university cooperation and of the knowledge and technology transfer from a Swiss and specifically Basel perspective. We are convinced that the close cooperation of stakeholders from the world of science and the economy promotes European integration beyond borders and reinforces the scientific and economic area of the Upper Rhine as a unique innovation cluster. We benefit from excellent conditions thanks to our three markets, numerous research institutions, clusters and enterprises. Joint cross-border science and technology transfer activities on the Upper Rhine give reason to expect a strong impetus to growth and employment in the region. Moreover, this motivation radiates from here to the whole of Europe for an even closer European cooperation in research and innovation. An example for this is the Beacon Questec which stands for Quantum Science and Technologies at the European Campus. What applies to Basel and its border location also applies to science. In order to successfully stay ahead of competition as regards location and ideas, cross-border cooperation is not merely an option, but a condition. In this respect, the current suspension by the European Union of Switzerland's participation in Horizon Europe weighs heavily on the Swiss research, research and university environment. We are therefore all the more pleased that Swiss universities can participate in the European Universities Initiative. The University of Basel in particular, 
will be part of Epicur, the partnership closely linked to the Upper Rhine. Thanks to the dual education system in Switzerland, which combines education and work, the term knowledge and technology transfer in brief KTT, which has, been, which has become popular in recent years, has never been a borrowed expression, but has always played a part in the center of knowledge and industry in Switzerland. I am all the more delighted that we can apply CARTOUR to build on existing structures. It is important to point out that it is not the case of either the University of Basel or the Universities of Applied Science Northwestern Switzerland, FHNW, taking part in the CARTOUR project, but the two universities forging ahead in collaboration. Opening up the entire network of the University of Basel, FHNW and cross-border universities has meant that SMEs can also benefit from the university services and programs in Germany and France and expand the market. After all, they come into contact with innovators from neighboring countries which, who knows, may also become future colleagues. As co-founding partner, Baselstadt is now looking forward to the results. Incidentally, in addition to Basel, the Swiss Confederation has also supported uh, CARTOUR through its financial instrument, the new regional policy, NRP. The project review, review has now shown that these challenges have been met to the extent that the capacity for innovation in the SME economy should increase and the quality of the range of administrative services across the borders should improve and become more innovative. We are excited to see what the results today will show. At this point, I would like to extend my warmest thanks for the invitation and wish us all an uh, inform informative and successful closure of the project with a lot, I hope, knowledge transfer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bergen. Today's goal is to showcase the highlights and the results of the KTOUR project. Having said this, KTOUR is not a mere mishmash of individual projects, of individual puzzle pieces. Much more, the puzzle pieces interlock perfectly to show a unified Upper Rhine region. Due to this, for the closing event, the project has decided to have a joint panel discussion to highlight this togetherness of the project partners. And it is my pleasure to welcome our panelists. Our first panelist is from France. It is <laughs> my pleasure to welcome Professor Dr. Michel de Matelin. He's the Vice President for Socioeconomic Relations and Transfer from the University of Strasbourg. He heads the project of transfer and innovation events, and I look forward to hearing to, from you about the Innovation Day, which we've also heard from, from Professor Hirt in Strasbourg this April. Welcome, Professor Dumatelin. Thank you. Our next speaker, or our next panelist, is Dr. Frauke Lorenzen from the University of Freiburg. She's the K-Tour project manager and heads the founder's office. Um, and for the KTOR project, she's responsible for the entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I look forward to hearing from you about the KTOR Startup Talks and the KTOR Summer School. Welcome, Dr. Lorenzen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest is Professor Dr. Franz Quint from the Karlsruhe University of Applied Sciences. From my right. <laughs> 
Um, Professor Quint is the Pro-Rector for Research, Cooperation and Quality Management and within the KTOR project he is responsible for cross-border continuing education. Welcome Professor Quint. Thank you. Next we have Professor Dr. Martin Heimel from the Furtwangen University. He is the Scientific Director for Innovation for the Innovation and Research Center Tuttlingen and within the KTOR project, he heads up the digital exchange platform Innovation X, which we look forward to hearing and seeing about. Welcome, Professor Heimer. <laughs> it's getting a bit cozy, but we have two more guests. Together with his colleague, Professor Heimer, Dr. Um, Ma sorry, Dr. Alessandro Massetti from the University of Basel also heads up the digital exchange platform. He is the team lead of innovation collaborations and the innovation office from the University of Basel. He's responsible for the transfer aspect of the innovation platform. Welcome, Dr. Massetti. Thank you. And finally, we have um, Dagmar Fessing, head of technology transfer from the KIT and she is responsible for structuring the cooperation of the technology transfer offices. Welcome, Ms. Fessing. <laughs> Dear project partners, I have a few questions for you. I hope you're ready. <laughs> Ms. Fessing, the first question goes to you. Um, I'm wondering, what is the focus of your work package and why is this aspect fundamental for the overall project? Our focus was to set up a network of um, the technology transfer offices and especially the people working in those technology transfer offices and um, to establish this network for on the one hand professional exchange and talking about technology transfer um, and cross-border activities in technology transfer but also um, getting to know each other on maybe a more personal level so that we can establish um, trust and, and knowledge about each other um, um, to work together in this project and but also after the end of this project and see what we can do about technology transfer in three nations and not only our own, our own nation. I think the openness of this closing event already shows that you were quite successful with this. <laughs> Ms. Fessing, <laughs> what specific measures or activities did you introduce to promote an active and sustainable network of technology transfer offices? Um, we actually, we started out um, with um, some workshops and we were lucky that we did those in the end of 2019 in the very early 2020 so we did those in person and um, the aim of those um, um, workshops basically was to um, get uh, to know each other and to uh, learn how technology transfer works in um, all the 12 um, um, institutes involved in, in the k project so that we get a feeling about um, similarities and differences and maybe just point of views on technology transfer, but also um, how does a TTO work in, in France, in Switzerland, um, uh, in, in a small university of applied science and a big institution like, like KIT. Um, but we also used those workshops. One was actually here in Karlsruhe, one was in Strasbourg and one was in Basel to also get to know um, the um, differences in the countries and to get to know each other on a personal level. We um, specifically chose to do them from lunch to lunch so that we always had a, um, um, a social event in the evening just to, to talk about everything, not only technology transfer basically. Mm -hmm. So this is where we started out and I, I, I still think this whole workshops were the basis for, um, for us to work together so well that what we did in this project because we had we did actually really work in these projects, but we also had a lot of fun and, and just um, um, learned how everybody, every person is, is in this project. So this is what we did at first. And after that, we um, had um, a sev uh, several work packages that we worked on. The, the core was um, the what we call the Cato Circle, which is basically a meeting of people from technology transfer offices once, maybe twice a year, where we always talk about specific topics that are relevant in technology transfer in this current situation. Could be anything, could be more specific, like talking about events, could but also be about politi political developments in, in, in the countries or in the European, um, European um, um, environment. So this was basically the core. We also did some stuff exchange, um, where people from one or the other technology transfer offices um, visited other TTOs and just um, learned in more detail how processes are there, how people work together, how everything is working. And we actually saw that this is a really good instrument to also um, have more acceptance about um, how different TTOs worked, especially we, we a colleague of mine went to France to, to the colleagues there and we also 
just saw the different models of technology transfer, so we get a more in-depth knowledge. And also, it's again about the personal connections that you develop. You just know the person you're talking to on the phone, which makes a huge difference. And the third one is more on the digital side. We established a, a, a simple chat tool, but it makes it easier to just reach out to each other um, um, for simple questions. How are you doing this and how are you doing that? Sounds easy, but it's just a, a small tool that gives us more access to each other. And which might be also a good pass over mm -hmm. to <laughs> Alessandro, actually, <laughs> because uh, what we did with the small chat tool will be part of um, the platform that the colleagues from Basel and um, from um, Offenburg, uh, not Offenburg, sorry about that, from Furtwang. <laughs> 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 um, I will take that hint. Thank yeah. you very much, Ms. Fessing. Um, okay, so we go from the small digital chat platform, and now we move on to the big Innovation X platform that we've heard about. And Dr. Massetti, maybe you could just let us in on the idea behind the design and the implementation of the platform and of the necessity of a common platform. Yes, thank you for, for the question. I think here I have uh, quite a challenge to try to explain it as, as a necessity better than the opening speakers did because they really frame the challenge we have I in a great way. Our society is challenged. Our uh, models are, are challenged. We have sustainability challenges. We have challenges in energy transition. We have our industry ecosystem that is challenged. And at the same time, we are at the core, at really at the center, uh, being the Upper Rhine Valley, at the most dense and economically rich region in Europe. And sometimes we are not uh, good yet at showcasing how good we are and how even, and how even better we are when we, when we work together. So this was really the original need and, and, and working hypothesis to really be able to showcase not only our individual strength in certain areas, uh, but also our collective strength and make this visible to our uh, industry and innovation ecosystem as a whole. And this, this originated our um, innovation platform as a tool for the whole innovation, startup, entrepreneurship, industry ecosystem to better and easily access uh, our uh, joint academia skills, talent, and, and discoveries. Thank you very much. Maybe for those of us who don't know the Innovation X platform as well as you two do, maybe um, Professor Heimel, you could explain to us what the main functionalities of the platform are and how these can help foster innovation. Yeah. Basically, one thing is well, what al uh, Alessandro already mentioned, that we have some kind of a backbone for, the, for this ecosystem because um, innovation is also about communicating, about networking, and about uh, doing things together. And the platform is one tool to get this initiated somehow. One thing is the projects, which are showcasing the regional excellence. That's one point. During the project, we also had the discussion what is most uh, valuable for this platform. We do not want to just do another platform. There are many platforms out there. So the question is, what are the main benefits for that? And for especially for the events part, we had a discussion for the entrepreneurial parts. We had a discussion what is most helpful. And we learned, Frauke will tell about that later on, um, that we had a lot of events regarding startup uh, information and, st and uh, discussions about startups and developments in, in this direction, which are done transnationally between the institutions. Mm -hmm. And it brings the people together. If you do it in the own institution, that's not too much. If you bring that together, that gets real more impact. And to showcase what we're doing in these events, just to get the offers not just to have the own people, but the people from the different universities that brings together. And that's one of the points that we have an event tool which brings together all these kind of events which are valuable for the entrepreneurial part, but also for research or other activities. And one additional point regarding the entrepreneurial part is also some kind of a startup guide which collects information what startups need to know also in a transnational manner because there are some aspects regarding legal, regarding funding, which is different between the countries. And that should be visible, that should be collected. And if you go to Google, of course, you can find anything, but it's not done in a structured way. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of the platform is to structure it, to bring it together, and to showcase you have one step towards this, and uh, that adds, adds this information. And I think that information, also learning about what, what we're doing, and 
basically going to the continuous in the education, I think it's uh, providing the knowledge how to do things and enable the people to do that. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Heimel. And I will take that again, um, <laughs> continuing on to the, to the educational aspect of it. And I know that you are mainly focusing on industry and further educating industry. So Professor Quinn, maybe you could give an example of um, one of the um, formats that you have developed within the last three years and um, talk a bit about the aspect um, of continue how no wait sorry of how continuing education fits into the context of the K2 project and the 12 universities yeah well uh, in my opinion uh, continuing education is knowledge transfer at its best yeah mm -hmm. it is at its best because it because it's a transfer of knowledge through brains through people and it is a little bit different from our normal job let's say what we are doing because this knowledge we transfer is applied tomorrow and not as usually in three or four or five years when our students go into work um, the, and the knowledge transfer over borders yeah, between different countries i think it this is in fact the sherry on the icing yeah. so um Doing this or implementing this, which, um, as far as I know, it's the first time that we are implementing a cross-border continuing education course. Of course, we will uh, find some hurdles. Yeah? And these hurdles which we have are um, not surprising. And in fact, the biggest hurdle have be hurdles have been in the administrational part. Yeah? We found out that the way of calculating an offer calculating the prices of such a, a continuing education course have been or are still different among the different universities in the same country, in Baden-Württemberg. We do not speak not of uh, Rheinland-Pfalz or, or Hessen. So it is not surprising that these uh, ways of doing the calculation are different in the different countries, yeah, because their, the legislation is different. So we first had to find a way to harmonize that because we are organizing the courses together. Yeah? And we started harmonizing that within the universities from Baden-Württemberg uh, participating in that continuing education. And once we have done that, we approached University of Strasbourg from France and then in fact this was quite simple, having a transparent basis to harmonize everything. And uh, as I said, it is interesting that, in fact, not the rewards for the trainers have been the problem, but the way how to calculate the admi administrative costs and all that. Okay, having succeeded that, we continued with the professional part, which was quite easy because we found two professors, one from Karlsruhe, the other from Université de Strasbourg, and we set up a program two courses, a beginner's course, an advanced course, the first one by the professor of Karlsruhe, the second one by Mr. Lampert from Université de Strasbourg. The courses took place in two locations, in Strasbourg and in Karlsruhe, and uh, the participants have been from all three countries. So it was really cross-border in the whole Upper Rhine region. A little bit of pity is that uh, the language of the course has been English, not German and or French, but having participants from the three countries, yeah, in fact, English is the lingua franca, and also when we consider that the course was on artificial intelligence, where anyhow the relevant terms are in English and would be translations in the other two languages. We made that course such that we introduced a large part of hands-on work of the students. It was, in fact, for both courses, 50% theory, then 50% hands-on work at the computer on those topics. And uh, the feedbacks which we got from the participants have really been good and interesting. It was especially that part of, of work, of hands-on work, which found a great resonance. Thank you very much, Professor Quinn. And I think great resonance was also found in the k Tour startup talks and the k Tour summer school. So Dr. Lawrence, and if I may continue to you, maybe you can just begin by giving us some insights on what is a k Tour startup talk? 
Oh, okay, that's a surprising question. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's um, a, state of, uh, a startup uh, cater talk was one of our uh, measures um, to, let's say, um, to come up um, with new ideas to uh, have students uh, be interested in in start of of uh, of uh, you know of uh, uh, young people being interested in founding uh, the own uh, company because um, I think we shouldn't take this for granted. Usually, young people come to the university, continue education, get the degrees, and get a job. But what we want, we want to take them and make. Uh, them uh, uh, or uh, let a company or a startup being um, uh, a focus in their in their lives. So um, this is, I think, a new uh, point to create awareness for for founders for being a founder. I think that's uh, the interesting questions. And if we talk about this uh, startup talks, um, we talk about um, I think a, ver a very interesting uh, project that we all did together. Uh, a transnational pr project online. I have to say, we, we uh, at the beginning we thought we could ev do everything in person, but unfortunately we we couldn't. But uh, I think this um, online um, session was also an adva advantage for us because we could bring together uh, young founders from three countries. Um, and uh, let them talk about their experiences, about founding a company, about teaming, about financing, and giving practical information uh, to the students directly. So, um, and this was a big advantage for every one of us um, because um, usually you get just the insight, um, for example, of a German founder, but now we had the three insights, um, which makes it more interesting. And I think um, since we had, a, a, I think, a very broad uh, um, or very big audience, uh, <laughs> usually we had about 30 to 60 participants on these online lunch uh, um, um, uh, talks. And uh, I think that was um, a big success for, for us, for every one of us, because it's also saved a little bit of energy because uh, not everybody, uh, uh, or not every uh, university itself had to create a talk. It's it was done by uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, well, let's let's say um, uh, three or even more universities creating a, a special atmosphere. I think I re uh, it was very a nice atmosphere and a very good um, project uh, that everyone, yeah, participated uh, from. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm convinced that for the startups, this is very a very positive thing. And I'm wondering how does the um, how does this benefit the economic development of the region or of the regions? Well, I think this is a very interesting question. I I think you cannot say within three years that the region will benefit from from such a project. I think it's a start, um, and I think we should really um, concentrate um, on developing this idea and then maybe in about 10 years we can talk about a success or benefit. This is just the initial idea and this is just of what I mentioned before of creating awareness of being a founder. I think uh, especially I must say in Germany and this is also probably the same thing in, in uh, Switzerland and France as we learned people think of a fixed job. Mm. They do not have a mind to be a founder. So um, I think it's very important that we come up and develop this idea. And then maybe within, or hopefully, and within uh, 10 years, we see a lot of more uh, uh, young companies. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lawrence. And Professor Heimel, you wanted to add something? Yeah, yes. Uh, a few comments, I completely agree on that. But I think there's one additional topic which is important for that. That's uh, if we go into innovation and if you want to drive innovation, that has to be sometimes done outside the standard procedures in the, in the companies. That has to be taken outside and especially if you do all these new technologies, I think it's good to have that in a different context. Outside that, that's innovative, that's new ideas, that's not the standard paths. 
So it's important to have that, to invest in that. And then it can, can come back to the industry and bring that forward. And we see that, for example, in, in, in the US or so, that all these startups drive new development directions. And I think it's a, a, that's also important for our countries, for our nation and for our region as well, that we have a driving force into that, that also these, this region is recognized as some kind of very innovative not only on the industry level, but also on the startup level and the, uh, that innovation economic uh, ecosystem level. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you very much. I think this fits to Dr. Michel de Matelin. If we think about innovation, I think the Innovation Day comes to mind in the KTOR project. And maybe you could share some insights about the Innovation Day, which took place in April of this year. Uh, yes, um, maybe first I, I would like to add a, a, a comment to what was said about this, the startup. Um, what I was interesting in this uh, entrepreneurship uh, summer school is the fact already that most uh, students, that they were not only from three countries, but they actually they were like 20 or 15 different uh, nationalities. Uh, and um, the other thing is that when you do a project, uh, the interest, what's interesting in a, in a startup is also how do you meet a new market and there is the issue on you need to be connected to, to basically the world, not just your small uh, community. So making a, a, a trinational uh, uh, in, in startup is already a one way to, to connect to, to uh, the rest of the world. So I find it so uh, very interesting uh, feature. So to speak about innovation, the innovation day, um, well, it was a big, of a, a big challenge because uh, well, we had this COVID uh, think, hopefully is behind us, <laughs> um, and uh, well, it was, of course, we had to decide, uh, should we make it, uh, you know, uh, through internet, uh, or just uh, wait so that we could uh, uh, meet together. Of course, uh, this type of meeting, it really makes a difference when we can really meet, and uh, uh, as uh, Digmar said, um, we, when we started the project, COVID wasn't there, and we had these first very useful meetings together to get to, to know each other. And here in the Innovation Day, it's really a day where we wanted to have different uh, communities to gather together. Um, uh, they were, of course, uh, the uh, academic you know, researchers, but they were also or people from the transfer in innovation uh, TTOs and uh, and um, our partners, then industry, but not only industry looking for collaboration with uh, academia, also startups, and students. So we we try to uh, in the same day to uh, to bring all those people um, together. And uh, of course, another challenge was to make it trinational. Once you make a, a big event in one place. You are not sure that everybody is going to show up. And all the network <laughs> work a lot to make sure that uh, it was not just a French event or a Strasbourg event. It was a, tri a true trinational tri event. We have about well, like 1,500 people uh, uh, gathering that day. Alors, 200 from, from a distance because we did hybrid. But mm -hmm. what was the, su the success part was the fact that so many people just came to Strasbourg for, for, for a day. And I would say like two thirds of the people were from France and, and, and one third from uh, Germany and Swiss, which was really a, a success from my point of view, uh, given the distance you need to travel. And uh, we have about uh, 20, more around 25% of the participants were from industry and the startups. Uh, which was quite nice uh, because the goal was to have these uh, different uh, communities or ways to do to see things. Uh, we do not probably not see the world the same way when we are in academia than we were in uh, industry. <laughs> together it that day was, was nice, yes. You, you mentioned that it's a challenge to cater yes. to the needs yes. of the yes. different stakeholder groups. Yes. How did that go for you? Well, we during that day we we mixed things. We had um, pa panel sessions like this one on very interesting topics. We invited uh, 
people uh, from industry or scientists that were a bit known in their in their domain. To uh, we had also um, startup presenting their projects. Like it was a nice. Uh, um, the day was. Uh, with uh, in, you know mixed of these uh, panel sessions and uh, conferences then startup uh, uh, pitch then in parallel we had this session where uh, you could meet uh, we had a, a platform to so that you could do uh, b2b uh, uh, meetings and we had about you know something like two, at least 200 meetings that day took place uh, people would reserve uh, time in, of the day and, 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 res and meet. So um, that was the, uh, also part of the, of the, of the one way to, to answer the needs. The other way, uh, we had also sessions where uh, uh, people presented, how do you do, I mean, what's the steps to make a startup, you know, for uh, researchers or students that are interested, um, how do you, uh, uh, how patents, how does it work? Um, um, how do you get some funding? How do you develop uh, activities? So there was also tutorials and workshops during the, that day. And of course, for the networking part, there was a f some kind of social events, uh, with a nice uh, after, after uh, day party for the ones who stay <laughs> <laughs> till the end. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, and the, the, actually the, the, the weather was with us, so uh, we, we people could even eat uh, outside of the uh, university uh, uh, building. So uh, everything was there, I think, all the your good recipes and plus uh, ingredients, good ingredients and, and nice participants. So what can I say? It was, I think, a big success. Okay, I think I have a picture in mind. Thank you very much. And um, apart from the Innovation Day, I know that part of your project was also to um, have company future events. And maybe you could explain why innovation events are such an important tool for knowledge and technology transfer. Well, you know, when you make an event uh, today, well, we learned from COVID uh, several things. First, that just uh, seeing each other, uh, humans are not... Um, you know, born to be uh, interacting with each other through uh, uh, computers. That's for sure. We cannot, uh, <laughs> we are social uh, uh, beings, so and, uh, just uh, through computers is difficult. But we learn also that, uh, yeah, they can be useful and making a hybrid uh, uh, events, it's one way to make sure that if you are far away, you could still uh, be part of, uh, of the end. The, the co of course, what we can achieve today uh, uh, in, on, the on the communication side makes it much easier. So with these uh, hybrid meetings that we have been, all of us been no use to, um, it's of course one way to make borders, uh, you know, uh, close, uh, you know, to, to make people closer to, e to each other. Um, and also, um, it's one way to bring experts on, on really uh, what's interesting in this, this type of events is that you can bring knowledge really from top experts and some of the experts doesn't, do not have to be there, they could even be from far away. And uh, during one day, you really get an interesting perspective and view on, on, uh, on specific topics and it's it's, kind, it's interactive, and then eventually, you, you, during that day, you are going to meet people then that you might be interested to continue to work with. So, so yeah, so I believe it's a good way, <laughs> a good tool for knowledge transfer, that's for sure. Thank you. Um, Dr. Lawrence, and Professor de Matelin, he spoke about challenges of bringing different groups together. Now, imagine when you're trying to bring up startups and founders from France, from Switzerland, and from Germany together, there will also be a few challenges. So I'm wondering how you manage to bring, bring together the different spin-off communities of the K2 partner, K2 partners and what challenges you encountered. Well, I think that was not really, I wouldn't call it a challenge. It was, I wouldn't say easy, either, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, quite interesting that um, everybody of us, everybody of the participating uh, partners had good connections, and so we were always able 
to get um, very open-minded founders into uh, our talks uh, or even to, our, to the summer school. And um, I think this also showed that within our own community, people are very good connected. So I can say, for example, I'm well connected in Freiburg and Michelle will probably say, yeah, we are very well connected in Strasbourg and this works. And now it's about bringing the, the systems together. And um, yeah, I, I can say as a result um, of all the um, pilot actions that we did, that it really worked out well, that we had very uh, powerful <laughs> founders from all uh, three countries encouraging our, our students, but also um, interacting with some uh, companies, which is also, you know, one part of our work. It's not only about universities and startups, it's also bringing together different actors. And I think we succeeded in bringing together all the different actors belonging to an ecosystem. And the ecosystem is not just us coming from the universities, it's it's uh, it's a lot of uh, more people coming from from industry, uh, coming from the, uh, the the young startups, uh, but also the intermediaries, uh, the, in the investors. There are so many people needed in this whole system, and um, yeah, I I, I personally th think it it re really worked out well because everybody was very good in its own system. Okay, thank you. And when we look at this picture up here, this is probably a picture of the summer school, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to maybe just say something about the picture? What comes to mind when you see this, when you see these young, happy founders? Yeah. I, I, I can really say it touches my heart. That <laughs> sounds a little bit sentimental, <laughs> but it does. <laughs> because, it, yeah, it's, it's just young people. And as we just heard, it's, it's not only three nations. It was, uh, I think, in the end, at the last summer school, we had 13 nations together. And um, this is, I think, also important for our region. We have to be open. It's not us. It's just not just uh, three uh, countries. It's more than that. So, um, and we were really able to invite, let's say, the world uh, to the summer school. And I think uh, these young people, they had a great time. I mean, they were enjoying three wonderful cities, <laughs> Freiburg, Strasbourg, and Basel. So this is really, um, yeah, I, I think uh, very, uh, very nice uh, uh, to have. And um, then it was very uh, good to see that these young people really managed well to work together. They worked on own project ideas. And we could even see, because we had one summer school, the first summer school last year, uh, that first startups are coming out of this school. So that was very surprising for me because I, I thought, okay, we're just doing it because we have, you know, you learn how to develop project ideas. But now we can also see, we talked about the benefits before, uh, that we are having benefits. And I think we should take these, I think, very inspiring projects and keep on, on working. And I'm, I'm very happy that we managed to, um, yeah, to have a uh, cater to <laughs> and to uh, develop more ideas, um, uh, yeah, and inspiring more uh, young people. That's that's about it. It's not about us uh, old people. Mm. It's about the young people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, <laughs> um, Professor Heimel. If I may ask, what role does the Innovation X platform play in all of this process? When we look at how it can benefit young entrepreneurs to better connect, what role can Innovation X play? I mean, basically, a platform is some kind of a tool. It brings together the offers and demands. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the core of it. And I think if you do some kind of an ecosystem here, innovation ecosystem, it has to do with bits and pieces which come together. And I think the platform is one tool for that. It shows the offers we have. And for example, if you're looking at the summer school, I think that it wouldn't have happened if Fachhochschulen in Nordwestschweiz did it alone, Uni Freiburg did it alone, or Strasbourg did it alone. It was because they were brought together. And sh that should be visible, and a platform can make this visible. It can also be a tool for communicating, showing the people behind that, showing the innovators behind that. So there are also com uh, communication capabilities in the platform. And that's what it is, uh, why is it a, back a backbone for, for that ecosystem. And 
it serves as a tool for cooperating also in the future because a platform does not live if it stays with some static information. It has to be updated, especially for the events which we offer. So it's a tool for doing this cooperation. I think K22 is one tool for that. That should be very important that to, to that. And also the question is how the platform develops in that direction. And the others is that we have to uh, continuously work together. I think the K2 project is a start, of a start for that and to make that, that visible. I think that's very important. And I have also to comment that we have the communication team as well, which really did a great job, especially heading at, headed at the KIT. And um, I think that's very valuable to get, get it visible to show what the region does and to show what the entrepreneur, entrepreneurs does, what the cooperation with the academia, uh, with the industry does, and all these topics which drive an innovation ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So we can see that the puzzle pieces are interlocking. Very nice. And we are transitioning to what is to come. We're looking ahead now to see what will the Innovation X platform be after KTOUR. And um, Dr. Massetti or Professor Heimel, feel free, who would like to answer, what could be possible next steps in the development of the platform? Maybe I just add up uh, some elements here. I think when we think and talk about knowledge and technology transfer and our societal challenges, we are in the end talking about people. We are talking about people that needs to, to do more, to do more together. When we look at that, we see young entrepreneurs, but in the end, this is people trying to, to do something for their life and that also has a uh, beneficial impact to, to our society. And as, as, as Professor Heimel said, as Martin said, we need to use the tools we have, the digital tools, the in-person tools, to really facilitate this, this exchange. I think uh, before the US was mentioned as the, as the example where this entrepreneurship and knowledge transfer is really at the extreme. And when we think the US, we think the Silicon Valley, but here we are at the Upper Rhine Valley. And I don't think we have nothing to, to be shy about ourselves and really turn these tools that we built into really the global visibility for us and, and to really improve what we can achieve together. Are there specific plans to include industry better in these next steps? That's a, that's a possibility. We come just from the discussion this, this morning mm -hmm. and we really hope we can include more stakeholders, more partners, uh, but it's also already possible. Anyone can just go to the platform and reach out directly to us so we don't have to wait for a cut or two to work together. People can go there, click you know, a, a button and really send us a chat message to all of us jointly together. So we, we really want to be reachable and we want to showcase that it is possible to collaborate and we are eager to collaborate more. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You'd like to add on, yes, please. A, a few, few additions on that. Um, that one thing is that you can chat with the people. The other point is that you can also submit events or even projects. So to be also to be part of that platform and showcase your excellence, which is should be, of course, in combination with the K2 institutions. That's a key point for, for that. But it's open also for the people to engage in that platform. And the platform is always only a first step towards it. Afterwards, it's the first contact where you can start your project. You can, you can start to cooperate. And if, also, if you're talking about K22, it's a question what the main directions are. We do not want to do a generic platform which does everything. I think that doesn't make sense. It has to be adapted to the use cases and the developments which we have, which our industry um, desires. And I think that's the next step. There is industry included. K2, of course, there was a focus on the academic area, but it was not uh, excluded with the industry. For example, Site Connectus was, was included, uh, different other partners were, were included. So that was a starting point for that. That can be developed further, definitely. And that could be a next step for that. Okay, thank you very much. And I know that if we look on the Innovation X platform, today's event is listed on there. So, the, and there are future events listed on there as well, so it definitely makes sense to have a look at the platform. Um, Dr. Lawrence, and if I ma may ask you one more time, er, er, what are your wishes or expectations for the future? Will the Cater st Startup Talks continue? Will there be another summer school? Yeah, well, I, I have a very personal <laughs> vision, <laughs> and I have a probably more objective uh, vision. So my uh, personal uh, vision is to meet all my colleagues, my dear colleagues that I have uh, meeting 
uh, well, not, not all the time in person, mostly online, but I, I really enjoyed uh, working together and, and I really hope uh, that we can continue this very, very uh, fruitful work. I think that's, that was uh, awesome. And well, then there's a more um, uh, objective uh, wish. I would really hope that uh, universities um, consider technology transfer as a strong third pillar. We usually concentrate on education and research, especially in the, I think, uh, bigger universities like Strasbourg, Freiburg, and probably Basel too, and Karlsruhe. And, but I, um, I think it's not, everything is not about research. It's, it's also about transferring things, transferring things uh, to industry, to society. And um, I think we should really focus on this and involve more uh, actors. And uh, then the, I think the, the project will be very, very successful and we will all benefit from this. Mm -hmm. So um, I really wish uh, that uh, uh, the universities open up and see a big opportunity and just dive in. I think it's admitting that we're not the sole owners of knowledge in that sense, but that we can definitely learn from each other in that sense. And for my domain, I, I come from pedagogic and uh, didactics field. I would say that this is also a big step that we are taking currently, that we're opening up on this. So I wish you lots of luck with that. Um, maybe Professor de Matelin, um, will there be a second innovation day? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 s we said this morning, we had a, a meeting this mm -hmm. morning where we, we were discussing the future and everybody said that, yeah, we, we should think of, of having a second innovation day. So we didn't say where and when <laughs> and how, but uh, at least the fact that, uh, yeah, given the, f the success and, uh, uh, yeah, it's very important. Uh, that's for sure. And uh, probably there will be more than just one big innovation day. We, we also thought about the fact that yeah, uh, we, we need several, we need meetings and uh, uh, maybe more specialized or whatever with uh, different circles. But uh, yeah, that's, that's f definitely should be part of the of common future. Mm -hmm. uh, we just started, so I, mean, I believe we shouldn't stop. So. <laughs> And we will also find those events on the Innovation X platform yes. when the time comes. <laughs> All right, um, Professor Quint, what would you like to see in the f field of cross-border cooperation, especially regarding continuing education in the future? Well, that's a good point, future, <laughs> yeah, to come from the challenges to the future. And I have good news, we have a future. I ho hopefully we all a great future, but also our uh, continuing education course on artificial intelligence will have a future, which means that the project finishes now, today, and the course continues. The next course, the beginner's course, is from the 12th to the 15th October, and the advanced course is mid of November. And we, of course, uh, also want to continue this in the following semesters, in each semester, both beginners and advanced course. And now, knowing how to set up such a cross-border course, we of course want to expand it to other courses. And if we talk about the future, we can, can also talk about wishes, yes? And uh, my wish would be a stronger involvement of the industry because the participants that we had in the first course, in the first two courses, they came by their own initiative, yeah, because they have felt that they need some training to uh, deepen their knowledge in this field, yeah. And of course, the course has been paid for them by their company, but as I said, it was not systematical or structural involvement of the human resources uh, department in their companies, but it, the initi initiative came from the participants. Okay, what we have also found out in, uh, during this process is that what you mentioned at the beginning, that there still seems to be a border less for the, for the younger people or for the children, but in fact we are dealing with the senior or with the middle management of the, of the companies. Now, if you want to take it like that, we needed a three years project to find it out. 
you needed a one-day bicycle <laughs> ride to Strasbourg <laughs> to find that out. So point for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, anyhow, I think that um, if we will be successful with several such uh, cross-border courses, then we bring the people more together. Yeah? The network will get stronger because as we have observed, especially those companies, there are, exist several which have branches in France and in Germany, they did not participate as one company, but more or less as two companies and the ties between some companies, let's say here in Germany or in the hometown, are stronger than between the two branches of the same company in the two countries. So the courses would be also one part of the puzzle to bring the people closer together, to build that network, and to overcome the border. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Could you maybe give a sneak peek on a different course other than the machine learning? Is there something that's being, being planned on a different yeah. topic? Yeah, it's not as much uh, different because, you know, we have the, the mega trends, yeah, and the general, the big trend in digitization is large, so we are thinking about robotics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's close to art artificial intelligence, but it is, it is demanded. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Fessing, I come back to you. What would you like to pass on to future projects? What are the main criteria for an active and sustainable network? Um, for the active part is basically the commitment and the willingness um, um, of the people who are part of this network. When I just heard Frauke talking, I, I had to think back on, uh, on our first meeting three and a half years ago when we started um, talking about a proposal for Kartur. And Frauke, I think, was probably the most skeptic person in, in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember her sitting there and it was like she wasn't saying much and so on. And as you can see now, she's one of our most active and, and um, uh, more most engaged persons in this Kartur network. And I think this is what the basis for, for such a network is, that the people are really part of this and are really willing to, to put the work and the time in, in such a network. You also need some people in the court to just push and, and organize and, and, and do do really the stuff, but it's really basically the people. And I also had to think back about um, a sentence I started hearing when I started at KIT uh, about a decade ago, and it was always about technology transfer as a people's business. And I think um, it's still true. As much as there is digital um, digitalization and you can go online and you can use platforms and so on, it's still a people's business. The more you know the people in your internal network, what we have here at KTOUR with, with the Carter Circle and the project meetings, but it's also about talking to the industry such a digital platform is a good way of uh, advertising, getting the first contact, but at the really successful steps you can only take if you meet the people in person. So it's still about people's business and people meeting in person. Thank you. My opinion. It seems to me the Cato project was a big success and a great added value for the Upper Rhine region. And as that were not enough, the project partners have big plans for the future, so I hear. And so you met this morning, and we will hear from Professor de Matelin and from, from Professor Hurt um, and get a small sneak peek on what is to come. But right now, I'd like to take the opportunity to give a big round of applause to our panelists. Thank you for giving insights to the project results. Thank you for being here, and thank you to your project teams um, that are behind this. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to keep you here, Professor oh, de Matelin, <laughs> and I would like to ask Professor Hilt to also come by my side. So we're approaching the end of the closing event of the k project of three years of technology and knowledge transfer. And at the, at the same time, it is the beginning of something new. And Professor Hilt, um, I would like to give you, I think you have to come to the podium. <laughs> I would like to give you the first words. You're welcome to come next to him. About what is to come, what are we to yes. expect? So uh, we are now at the, the end of a project, uh, but the end of a project is not the end of the cooperation. I think that has clearly been seen also from uh, the discussion before. And uh, I was very impressed by by the results which have been achieved so far. And we have, I, I have seen that, uh, that that what we have discussed when we, we have had our first idea on the project uh, in the year, two, I think some discussion started in the year 2018. 
and um, I th I'm very happy that we have started this project and uh, that we have achieved so many results and therefore many thanks uh, to the Kato team, team for this uh, valuable pro uh, work which have been performed over the past three years and the contribution also to this uh, um, to the viability of the TMO. I'm every, t every time I'm impressed about the activities in this region about the cooperation. I know a lot of other regions, but I think uh, the, the Upper Rhine region is a very, uh, very fruitful and uh, very innovative uh, region. Um, and uh, of course, the work has not finished yet. So there will be a follow up project, uh, which will be coordinated by our partners uh, from the University of Strasbourg. So also in the, in the sense of uh, international cooperation. Um, and therefore, I would like to hand over the baton um, to my colleague, Professor de Matlin from the University of Strasbourg. He was part of the discussion in the morning. It's a pity I had not the chance to be part of this discussion in the morning, so uh, I get also some information. But I, I, get the information, I got the information that uh, you had a very excellent discussion on, 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 on the topics what you and on the plans, what you want to do in the next uh, few years. Um, and I, I'm sure that uh, with the strong networks of OICOR as well as of Trainatec, we have a good basis uh, for the cooperation. Um, and I think uh, you have also good ideas. And based on the work you have performed so far, I think there is a, a, a good basis for the future cooperation. So therefore, I would like to hand over the baton to you. So it's your Thank part, you. Michel. <laughs> So uh, thank you, uh, uh, Thomas. So it was, uh, yeah, it's well, it's a kind of uh, honor just coming after you. Uh, you, you, um, I, I should say that uh, if this this project has been a, a big success, it's also because the KET team was very much involved, and uh, I think it would not have started with uh, all the energy that was put. I remember the proposal was really done in a, sh a few months, and uh, it was a lot of work. So uh, I think we, sh we should applaud the, the KET team because it was really, uh, if we are here today, it's really thanks to your, uh, your energy at the beginning. <laughs> So um, yes, uh, we, it was a bit of a teaser already between with the discussion and what, what's going to be uh, next. Of course, well, um, everybody got enthusiastic on the achievement that were done, and we I think we had some kind of lower expectation. Very often, we come out of a European project with just a, a big report that goes in, in somewhere on the shelves, so, and um, and that, that's it. Um, this is one of my, this is probably the most successful project from my point of view where we are not coming just with a report, of course there'll be a report, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it's not yet finished by the way, so we still need uh, all the people in the room to be involved in writing that report, but uh, um, well, uh, this uh, project is coming out with uh, uh, some, uh, you know, a platform, you, you, we mentioned a uh, website, nice, nice logo and things like that. Uh, also, we've, uh, we did some proof of concept that were very successful, you continuous education, events and so on. So, well, everybody would like to, to keep, you know, build on that. And uh, we, we, even with COVID, we managed to uh, know each other much better. And we realize that uh, even so, we share a, a lot of uh, common uh, values. And, and this uh, interesting that up the Upper Rhine region is, has a long history in, in, uh, in Europe of uh, being a, 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 an area of Europe where a lot of, uh, of uh, humanism came out. And uh, interesting, uh, we are building on this uh, uh, common uh, community in a way, but we are very different also on different things. Yeah, food is one example, but <laughs> not, uh, not only. And um, so uh, we, we got uh, uh, very rich of, of those differences in our society. And uh, the goal is also to keep 
to keep this project uh, going on and our initial idea also that together we probably would achieve a lot more than being alone and also make this region more attractive from the outside world. Uh, get more no, uh, visibility from when you are on, on Google, you, you, if you could see from somewhere in the world what's going on in this area, that would be nice. Um, and um, of course, if we are together, then we can show more. And um, we don't want to stop. Uh, so on the, on the next project part, well, we are started to, to work on building this new proposal. And um, we already spent the morning sharing ideas and it was a very nice discussion. So now we are going to go into work work uh, group, um, you know, think tank and uh, do some brainstorming to come up with uh, uh, ideas of action. But uh, basically, um, you know, things that have been proposed, show today will be our area of, of, uh, of uh, the area, the domains where we are going to, to build actions like entrepreneurship, uh, or do ca we, ca we cater to the needs of industry what kind of services we can provide to help development of research and technology in our industry uh, uh, in this, in, in, this uh, uh, in the upper Rhine, or we do, um, or we, we do better communicate on what we, we are able to achieve in our universities and, and, and together. Or we um, uh, also, it's very important to keep uh, the, me the meetings and um, and the, the platform, is we decided to keep that tool and really uh, invest in it. And uh, it's very important, by the way, since the, the new project is not going to start immediately, we have to build it, then probably there's going to be a, a one-year gap between uh, uh, this project at the end of the K2 project and the, probably the following one. It's important to keep alive uh, the network and the platform will be useful for that. So. Uh, so we are not going to stop immediately to see each other. At, we are going to see each other even more these coming weeks <laughs> to build the new project. And um, a lot of friendship came from this network. And uh, uh, we didn't know to, well, who, who was doing what in, in, in the different universities. It's interesting that this project has been putting together uh, two groups that usually are not always on the same project. Uh, you know, the Hochschule in Germany and with the university, the big university. So uh, that's also uh, an, an interesting uh, uh, side effect. It's because we look at the project from the point of view of the industry. We say, what's the industry expecting from us? So it's another way to do things. We, 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 we are not coming in this K2 and K2 2 certainly uh, not. We are going to really focus on, uh, let's look at the point of view of the industry and uh, uh, what, what, how can we do better for industry and, and for economic development in this area. And um, we mentioned that there are huge challenges ahead of us where innovation is, will be a key. You mentioned it in your introductory comments. We have this energy crisis and with this war, hopefully we expect it. We don't know how, how long it's going to be, but anyway, energy crisis pushes us to go further into working on, uh, on sustainable development. So in a way it's accelerating things, but how do we do adapt our industry to that and how the universities uh, can help and uh, be a part of it? There is the issue of, uh, um, we, we are an area of Europe of, of high employ employment, so how do we <laughs> make sure that the, our industry can uh, hire enough uh, uh, talented people, young people, and also being an attractor from other places in the world. So it's important to be, to be a showcase also with this, the, our next project so that we get higher visibility and eventually students come from other places in the world. And uh, so, yeah, we have a, a lot in front of us, but uh, we are all very enthusiastic. So I'm very happy to be, <laughs> we'll be very happy to be uh, co coordinating our next, uh, our next project. So I already thanks you, thanks everybody for, for, uh, for your involvement, today's involvement, past involvement, and future involvement.
Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Hurt. Thank you, Professor de Matelin. I think you have big goals for the future. I wish you the best of luck with that. To our digital audience, thank you for your interest. To our in-house guests, I would like to invite you now to a networking cocktail. Please remember to follow and like the platform. I'm sure there will be much that you can see and hear from the Katur and Katur 2 projects soon. Thank you to all the speakers and to the panelists. And with that, I say adi. Bon soirée and auf Wiedersehen. Thank you. Sehr gerne. Project Katur, we will contribute to strengthen the Upper Rhine metropolitan region. I see this as a fantastic growth opportunity for all of us and a vital step towards our shared aspiration of becoming the pioneering region in Europe. And yeah. On est aussi en capacité de faire une offre globale vers les entreprises, et ce qui est beaucoup plus intéressant que si on essaye de faire chacun des projets de son côté.